everyone, welcome back to Fly Tying Tuesdays. Steve here. Uh, I'm gonna be tying a variation of John Newberry's Knuckle Dragger Stone. Uh, this is kind of a series of patterns that he has that kind of started out, I believe, with his Dirty Hipster um, that ties the legs forward on these kind of rubber-legged patterns. And those front legs are about twice the length of that kind of leg coming out in the middle there. Um, and what that does is makes it so that when this is rolling through the current, uh, those front legs kind of have a swimming action, a movement action. It's not going to get fouled up underneath the hook point like some other rubber leg patterns that you might have tried. Um, the reason I'm calling this a variation is I'm taking some liberties with materials, substitutes, and some different colors and things like that. Um, but the concept of this fly is super, super strong. I recommend you check out the other options that John Newberry has in different colors for different types of bugs that you're going to find subsurface. Um, this is just one variation that I particularly particularly like as an anchor fly in my Euro rig, just looking like different types of leggy stone flies in the sort uh, down on the bottom of the river. So uh, without further ado, let's get it started. The hook that I'm going to use is going to be an Umpqua X-Series uh, XC400BL. This is the super jig and uh, it's nice strong hook, super sharp, gives me a good amount of real estate to tie on when I'm doing this pattern. And then that bead is going to be a fire hole bead. Uh, this is kind of a, a two-tone speckled bead from them. I will make sure to give you all the details on that in the description and the recipe. Uh, originally tied on a fulling mill jig force in about a size 8, uh, but I'm using out this uh, Umqua X-Series hook today. All right, thread is UTC 70 denier in brown. You can change this up to be a hot spot if you'd like to do something like a red or even like a white kind of creates a nice contrast with some of these darker neutral natural colors. All right, so we took that down to about where the barb would be on this barbless hook, and then we're gonna do our tail. That's just gonna be some barred sexy floss from MFC. Um, again, you can change up some of the colors on this. But the way I like to do the tail is kind of do a bear hug around that thread, kind of facing concave side towards me with the rubber legs. Start wrapping around and that's going to get that up onto the hook shank for you. And then you can start to kind of pull things tight, see where they're sitting and shape it and manipulate it for how you want it to look. And you want to try to avoid building up too much bulk here because it'll throw off the uh, body that we're going to build up with that D rib here in a second. Trim that out looking pretty good. I'm going to kind of just work this taper a little bit and there is a bit of a speed bump where I tied that material in so I'm going to try to get things looking a little bit more uniform and flush before I come in with that D-rib material. If you were tying say a golden stone or something like that you could have this D-rib D -rib be more of an amber color or vary it for whatever looks best. Um, in your local waters if you're seeing stoneflies with a predominantly you know x color over a y color i would do that rib in that given color um, but i like this here um, variation it kind of matches a lot of different things but not one thing in particular so it gives me some good options there Just secure that in. Again, trying to keep everything flat and smooth. Doesn't have to look that clean as long as the surface is relatively level. And you notice I kind of tuck that up into the slot of the bead. That way I have kind of a uniform um, kind of height and bulk of the body all the way down to that tail. And then I made sure that when I start wrapping this that the flat side of the the D of the rib is against the shank, so the rounded side is gonna be on the exterior. I'm gonna do these first couple of wraps pretty snug. Again, I'm trying to compensate for the fact that there was a thread bump there. And then once I get past it, I can kind of relax that material a little bit more and let it um, kind of take on that segmented shape that I want. And kind of going, I don't know, I would say maybe three-fourths or even four-fifths the way up towards that bead. I'm just going to throw some wraps around that last strand and secure it. 
trim that out. So here is where I kind of have a significant difference from the original pattern. Nothing too crazy, but on the original uh, knuckle dragger, Newberry is gonna use kind of a, a snowshoe uh, composite loop that has some longer, uh, more substantial soft hackle type fibers in there. Um, and I'm gonna achieve a similar look by using some spiky squirrel dubbing. So it has those longer kind of guard hairs in there. Um, and it's just gonna give me that kind of buggy, leggy, kind of thoraxy look that I want to get here on this stone fly. So I'm going to kind of pinch a tuft of that dubbing, kind of shape it um, relatively thin and on the longer side so that I can kind of feed that up into the thread. And you can use a clip here if you want, um, but you know, most of the time you can kind of shape it with your fingers and, and, and get what you need out of it. Now I'm going to half hitch my thread and utilize my bobbin cradle. And then just give this a spin. You can come in there and kind of pick out some fibers, make it look buggier, leggier if you want. And I'm gonna build this up pretty uh, bulbous, I would say, because it's also gonna serve as a bit of a bumper to flare out my next set of legs. So I'm gonna crawl my thread back up, work my way back to that and capture it off. Trim out the rest of the loop. And then I'm going to try to make kind of like a flat thread base with that remaining real estate there. And this is where I'm going to do my next set of rubber legs. <clears throat> Again, I'm going to take my thread, give it a bear hug with that rubber leg from behind it coming towards myself, and then start to wrap that up. And I'm going to do like two loose wraps right there. That's enough to keep it in place, but loose enough to keep me, you know, able to move that around and get it situated the way that I want it before I really snug things down. So I'm gonna have a similar length on uh, these legs as I do the tail on that back half and kind of secure that down. And like I said, I'm gonna fold this back and you can probably see on that overhead there, I'm gonna fold this back and I'm gonna trim it about twice the length, maybe one and a half times the length of this leg here. Um, which kind of lands you not quite the length of the tail, but maybe just shy of it. A little strand extra there, trim that out. There we go. And I'm gonna repeat this process on the other side as well. Like I said, that's kind of what um, created this whole series and new way of tying uh, rubber legged patterns for John Newberry, as you can read on his website and blog, um, is having these longer legs towards the front allows for that swimming kind of action motion out of the legs and they don't foul up on the hook. It's just kind of a better um, rubber legged experience. And I find them to be really successful um, and productive as an anchor fly on a lot of my tight line fishing rigs. All right, so now we're just gonna top this thing off with uh, some peacock dubbing for the collar. Um, if you're using an ice dub or a UV, you know, synthetic flashy type material, um, a little bit of dubbing wax is, you know, gonna help that grab. Um, and if you have a preferred dubbing that you always like using for stoneflies, you have good success with it. Just try that same thing out on this pattern here. But this just kind of helps break up the fact that you know, all these things are kind of within one theme, one color theme um, and palette on the fly. Just a little bit of UV peacock gives a little shimmer, flash. Sometimes there's a bit of like an iridescence to the, you know, the, the wing casing and the thorax of a stone fly. So this kind of hints at that a little bit and just gives a little bit of pop if you are using it in dirty water conditions or something like that. So depending on the positioning of your front legs, you know, I could come in here and start to kind of figure eight and prop the legs how I want them to be. And, you know, you can tighten down and see them flare outwards a little bit more. I can relax the thread and they kind of come back forward. Um, you know, this is looking pretty good to me. Sometimes I whip finish um, in front of the legs and behind the bead. 
but I have no problem sealing the deal on this guy right where I'm at. And that looks pretty good to me. So if you want to manipulate the leg positioning, you can change up where you actually finish the fly. Um, but if it's looking the way that you want it, go ahead and give it a whip finish. There you have it. That's a variation of John Newberry's Knuckle Dragger. That's a really cool series of patterns for a lot of different bugs that you're going to find with, you know, something that you would tie with rubber legs. Give this, um, this kind of formula, this kind of physique a try, and uh, I'm sure it'll bring you some success. Thanks for watching.